Hi, I'm Dr. Shetra Werdeliker, and um, I wanted to talk to you today about adoption gaslighting. Um, and so as an adoptee from India, I've definitely experienced that at times, and most of the other adoptees I know have experienced that as well. So today I wanted to describe some of the ways that I see that happening. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the term gaslighting, um, basically it's a, a psychological manipulation that occurs that's discrediting or questioning what someone feels or what their experiences or thoughts or beliefs are. And it's, it's making them doubt their own perception. And with adoption, what happens a lot of times is that looks like our, our feelings about the complexity of adoption being invalidated and the wide range of emotions and things we feel being invalidated or dismissed. Um, and so sometimes like some examples of that are when people, um, when you tell you like, oh, you know, that's not how you really feel, or they turn it into this dichotomy of you must be an angry adoptee or a happy, well-adjusted adoptee, and there's nothing in between. Um, so it minimizes us to those categories. And sometimes it just looks like people telling us like, oh, you're not, you're not remembering that correctly. Like you must not actually remember how it was because that's not true. So it tells us our perception wasn't accurate. Um, I also feel like that whole sense of being looked at as um, like a perpetual child where you feel like people are condescending or they're patting you on the head and you know we're, we're just looked at as perpetual children sometimes when we're adopted and so there can be that sense that um, anytime we explain how we're feeling or describe our lived experience that we're just kind of placated and told sure sure that that's fine that's how you feel that's okay even though we can tell they're not actually believing it or valuing the input that we're giving um and sometimes i feel like i see that being just the way too that people look at adoption as a single event that happened and they tell us that you know it was so long ago you just need to get over it and move on um so again just really disregarding the complex and lifelong emotions that go with adoption um, so another thing I've noticed too is that a lot of times with people who aren't adopted, when we try and explain about the losses or grief or trauma in adoption, it turns into this like trauma Olympics or oppression Olympics where um, the non-adopted person wants to sort of like one up you and tell you all about the ways that, um, you know, they've experienced loss or they've experienced trauma or they know what it's like to be separated from someone they love or miss them or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but just that, that they feel like they know better than us what the experience of adoption is because they have generalized it to their own experience. Um, a lot of times too, I think it comes down to that whole narrative of you're so lucky and you should be grateful that we are gaslit by that whole savior mentality and people thinking that um, we were rescued and given a better life. And while there may be different opportunities when you're adopted, it, it doesn't necessarily equate to better. So this idea of like, Sometimes people will tell you, well, do you know what your parents had to go through to, to get you home and all the, the sacrifices or struggles they made? So again, it's that sense of you don't get to feel what you feel or feel the losses or the, the difficult parts of adoption. You should just be happy and grateful and go with like a rainbows and unicorns kind of perception of it. Um, and when they do that, it, a lot of times too, there's that message of like, well, you know, would you have been better off if you were dead or still in an orphanage or if you had been aborted? And those are not comparisons to the experience. It's not an either or kind of scenario, um, but it gets minimized into that. And so that's where we are gaslit, where we're basically told like there were, you know, maybe these two or three options for your life. And this is the best one is to be adopted. So, you know, the other piece of that that I see, and certainly there are a lot of ways we're gaslit, but the other one I wanted to mention today is that anytime as adoptees, it seems like we want to know our first family or learn about maybe the birth culture that we came from. Um, it can turn into this like, 
sense of betrayal, like you're supposed to choose between this life that you were born into and the life that you were adopted into. So it becomes like, well, you know, how can you talk about that? Or how can you hurt your parents or disappoint them or not respect them or honor them? Um, so it can be the sense of like, you're, you're not allowed to feel like you have lost something or like you miss someone or um, feel any sadness or grief. So instead of being allowed the space to mourn, it becomes this, like, you have to choose and not talk about your past. You have to choose the present only. Um, so I think, you know, like I said, there are a lot of ways that people experience gaslighting, but those are just some that, that I thought I'd mention today. And um, to let you know that as an adoptee, whatever you're feeling, um, whatever you're experiencing, it's valid it's real and it doesn't have to match what every other adoptee experiences and feels. We're all unique despite the commonalities in our experiences. So um, don't don't allow yourself to be gaslit. Know that what you feel is, is always something that matters. And um, I'd like to just give a shout out and a thank you to two other fellow adoptee therapists who helped me kind of compile this list of things to share today. So thank you, Andrea Lyons, and thank you, Kathy McKechnie. And um, thank you to all of you for watching.